President Trump's next guest, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, set to have lunch with the president in Washington later today. At the top of the agenda for the leader is the controversial Iran deal, along with impending U.S. tariffs on steel and aluminum products. The, uh, the deadline for exemption is this week. Tense relations between the commander-in-chief and the chancellor could be especially apparent coming off of the president's warm reception of President uh, Emmanuel Macron of France. Joining us now to talk more about that is former defense and economic minister KT Zu Gutenberg. KT, great to see you, sir. Thanks so much for weighing in this morning. Good morning, Maria. Your thoughts on what it will take place at that lunch between Angela and Donald Trump? You've been talking about caravans before. So what we've seen now this week, or what we're seeing this week, is a European diplomatic caravan coming to Washington, D.C. However, after bromance, after the poster boy from Paris, we have pragmatism now approaching today in, in Washington for a working lunch, which is different to kisses and to hugs and to shoulder padding and which uh, doesn't raise much, much expectation from my side, because if you're honest, Macron had more to offer to uh, Donald Trump, but what did he achieve? Actually, nothing. So my highest expectation, or probably the biggest outcome of German-American relationship will be what you have mentioned before already, that we finally, finally have a new ambassador for Germany from the USA, actually a great guy, Rick Grenell. We're looking forward to that. But all the hot topics, I don't have much expectations. Well, no expectation. I mean, Germany, what, has like a $70 billion deficit, uh, surplus with the U.S. We have a deficit with Germany. Is that going to be uh, lowered? You know, what happens with the aluminum and steel uh, tariff? So where do you think the positioning is on that conversation? Because that's going to be real important to, obviously, the chancellor. Definitely. And this is a point where the Europeans stick together and they do have an interest that it doesn't come to the first May imposing of these tariffs. And as you have, as you have heard, the Europeans and specifically the European Commission is prepared to answer that. It's prepared to answer any step coming from the U.S. side with measures coming from the European side. I can only say we have to do everything to avoid that because that could lead to a trade conflict nobody will profit from. And that will be the point that uh, Angela Merkel will be making today. Will she achieve anything here? Macron wasn't successful with his approach, so it, I'm, I'm doubtful. I think there is a good possibility that we might see trade tariffs uh, being imposed next week. I don't think it's a good solution. I think it will harm our relationship even further, and that's nothing we could have an interest in. Does Macron's visit change the possibilities for Merkel? I mean, we know that her first meeting with the president was, was less than, you know, cordial. Or it was cordial, but there wasn't a strong relationship there. Because the president seems to have a stronger relationship with Macron, does that make things easier for Merkel, or does it actually put her in a tougher spot coming to the U.S. on his heels? On one hand, you could say it's a good opportunity to play some kind of a good cop, bad cop, um, game from the European side. On the other hand, it's no game. It's, it's dead serious topics we are talking about here. And I think Donald Trump understands that he's still dealing with the most powerful European leader here. Macron might be the most charming one at the very moment, but Germany is still the strongest economy. Germany is still responsible for a lot of things that have impacts on, Europe, on, on American interests as well. So specifically regarding all the economic interests we have, specifically also the interests we have how to tackle China in the future, I think it is a good point to make also from, from Angela Merkel's side to say, let's tackle all of these things together and let's not go in separate ways here because we'll be way more efficient. So that might be her Approach, but I've never seen a German delegation beforehand lowering the expectations of a visit as much as this time. Yeah, KT, uh, I think. It wait, KT, I just want to raise the issue of Iran, though. That seemed to be the biggest news out of the Macron visit earlier in the week, that Emmanuel Macron seemed to be willing to accept a revised Iran deal with some of President Trump's demands in it. Real progress toward an a, a Iranian nuclear deal revision with the U.S. and Europe standing side by side. Where does Merkel stand on that? Will that be a point of focus? It'll definitely be a point of focus. And what I hear from my European friends is that it, they were actually surprised about that, uh, that, 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 that step Macron took because they expected him to stand firmly on the lines they have, they have negotiated beforehand and to say, OK, we are not moving a single inch because otherwise we're opening a gate here and, and we might even 
we might even seem inconsistent for any future deals, for instance, for uh, North Korea. And this is the big news of last night as well. So all these things are have to be taken into account. So I, what I hear was that the German delegation was quite surprised about Macron's step. But I think they will follow his line because the last thing we can we need here now is Euro, the, the European Union being separated on that issue as well, because that plays into the hands of those who'd like like to play cynically with our common and shared interests on both sides of the Atlantic. KT, you had mentioned that uh, Angela Merkel is the strongest European leader, but it seems since the election, the last German's elections, her influence has been completely waning. How much influence does she actually have over what the German people want? And is that one of the reasons why that you're seeing Macron starting to take the lead because he doesn't know how much influence she'll be able to sway over in Germany? That's a very good point. But on the other hand, Macron, just by himself and alone, France alone, cannot push the European Union forward. It needs a coalition between Berlin and Paris. And that's exactly what they try to form. So a lot of, a lot of power still is, is at least theoretically given in Berlin. Of course, she has lost influence after the election, but mainly domestically. On the European stage, she is still extremely influential just because of the economic power Germany has. And that's one of the things we have to take into account. Having said all that, Europe has problems, the U.S. has problems. So it's, there, are, there, there are a lot of nationalist movements going on we have to fight. And there are more and more things we have to look at whether we can tackle that not only on a governmental level, but also from, 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 from private initiatives and other things. So there are things happening on both sides of the Atlantic. I think we have to concentrate on those things, too. Yeah, and, and uh, do you think that he is going to pull out of the Iran deal? And how would, how would uh, Chancellor Merkel feel about that if he doesn't renew it on May 12th? So from a European point of view, that would be a disaster um, because the Europeans would not follow Americans' lead here. The Europeans will most likely try to keep ties alive with Iran. And we have to take into, into, into consideration here as well that it is not only the Europeans, it's also Russia and China sitting in a boat. And they'll shake the boat even more if we show disunity on both sides of the Atlantic. So pulling out of the Iran deal entirely leaves us with nothing. Renewing the deal or reforming or coming to a, to, to a deal that's a bit more, that's a bit more creative than the lousy deal we have, we have seen so far is probably the better option than nothing. And what she'll tell the president, as Macron did, if you pull out and if you try then to find a solution with North Korea, you might not be very credible. All right. We will leave it there. KT, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thanks very much. Kate